everybody, uh, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. I hope everybody is having a good weekend, whatever that is. For me, it's been a work weekend. I know you guys have heard me talking about the uh, epigenetic symposium uh, that we did uh, with Wellspring Family Clinic and Institute along with uh, the University of Houston and the Harris County Sheriff's Office. Uh, the goal was to explore the influence of epigenetics on generational trauma, on long-term negative health uh, implications and outcomes, as well as its impact on an increasing crisis as far as mental illness is concerned. I have been spearheading research for decades, and the last seven, eight years has been pretty intensive in this particular area because it is uh, something that is becoming exacerbated ver uh, in comparison to uh, being mitigated. And, and what I mean by that, things that you understand, things that you know exist, you should be working to reduce its negative impact. And the absolute opposite has been happening in these areas that I've mentioned. And I've partnered with some people and we're putting in the work. And that uh, symposium was successful. Uh, people got to express their voice, um, their concerns. Uh, it was some pretty tense moments as they confronted uh, law enforcement representation who was there uh, as a part of our partnership. Uh, but I think we gained some ground, but more importantly, we opened some minds. We challenged some people to understand what was happening in their own individual lives and in, the, the, in their communities. It is something that is deeply rooted in my heart and my passion, along with properly socializing young black males, restoring the black family nucleus, creating an awareness around economics and um, wealth building and financial literacy. These are things that I have pushed and fought for and researched and disseminated my findings and created programs for, for years now. And to see um, that glimmer, because I'm telling you this battle isn't for uh, the timid. This battle isn't for the weak. Uh, this battle is for those who are willing to go the distance in many times not being able to see beyond the darkness in front of them, but trusting that the light is on the other side. For the people who showed up, I want to say thank you. For the people who wished me well, I want to say thank you. For the people who want to see it uh, in its totality, uh, it is on my channel it is also on the channel for greenhouse international church the production on it um while live was great uh it streamed people seem to be able to um completely get it while it was streaming but i've understand that uh, i've been told that the uh, audio isn't the best, but you can hear it from what I've understood. It's on my channel, um, this channel. So if you want to go, I, it, it's there. Uh, it's the Epigenetic Symposium. Um, there's a lot there. There's my lecture. There's a Q&A. There is a panel discussion with people who have the, the knowledge and the willingness to put in the work. I have constantly put myself in a place to stand up and give a voice to the voiceless. I have uh, tirelessly been an advocate for our children in school districts that did not want to acknowledge their genius and their giftedness. I have gone to battle with law enforcement and the justice, uh, criminal justice system to be an advocate uh, for our young boys and girls. I have done it on an adult level and I have spent time and still spend time in juvenile court. What I'm telling you is there's a war being waged and right now we're losing that war. 
we are caught up in a casual approach to a cataclysmic possibility that's not going to bode well. We're going to end up being casualties of our casual uh, approach to solving our own problems. And it bothers me because the answers are there. It bothers me because the time is now and we are being distracted with superficial, superficial, sensational um, content. Media and social media bombards us with things that get us excited, either angrily or happily, but at the same time, not driving us to the things and the behaviors and the, the, the mindsets and responses that are so necessary to produce the results we consistently say we want. We're losing our children. Little black girls from age five to 13 now lead the statistical category of suicide among girls in that age category. We talked about this yesterday, uh, before, during, and after the event, the fact that uh, our unwillingness to address the mental health crisis in the black community has also led to a 49% spike in suicides among black males between the age of 14 and 24. I am constantly being introduced to young black males. Many are teenagers who struggle heavily with suicidal ideation and um, we are not confronting that the resources are not available we are not dealing and i told you about four or five months ago that we were launching a research um, project into understanding the implications further understanding the implications beyond suicidality and dysfunctionality into the realm of how is it impacting incarceration? How is it impacting homelessness? How is it impacting adverse childhood experiences? Because fathers who are struggling with mental health issues aren't present. And it goes on and on. And we're sitting here and we're thinking that someone else is going to fix our problems despite the historical uh, representation of the contrary. We are sitting around and we are caught up in the dance of acceptability, the dance of fitting in, the dance of proving I've arrived, the dance of pretending what I see I don't see because I don't want to have to face the responsibilities of becoming proactively involved in solving the problem. Let me tell you something. I've been fighting this battle for a long time. I've been on the battlefield and I will die fighting for what I believe in. I'm not a quitter. I'm not somebody that's just going to turn around and throw my hands up in the air because it's not easy. I knew it wouldn't be easy when I took it because if it was easy, someone else would have done it a long time ago. I've watched brilliant minds fall by the wayside or die broke because the people wouldn't get behind them. And yet I, I press forward. Why? Because at some point we're going to have to rise up and be a people willing to plant seeds into children that we may not live long enough to see bear out the fruit of the seed that we plant. We're going to have to be willing to sit up and stand up and fight as men and be in front of our women and provide the covering necessary for them to heal and come into their own and be the powerful forces of discernment and spiritual elevation that we need. We're going to have to be the men that are going to sit up and say, I'm returning to the home. Even if some of the children in that home don't belong to me, I am trying to tell you that we don't take that response and we talked about that see I was taught as a young boy that if I met a woman and she had children that 
if I was going to love the woman, I had to love the children. And see, there's a natural push for men not to want to raise or to truly, totally be engaged. And I know a bunch of men who have. So I'm not going to throw that out there like like we don't have those because I've done it. I've done it. And we talked about this yesterday. And the men who have done this, uh, we all agree, we don't use the term step when we refer to the children who aren't biologically connected to us. They're our children. We accept that role, but we're going to have to realize that because when you have as many households with men not in them, we're going to have to fill those households and we are going to have to be willing to raise up. And then it's going to need to be another level where we're not going to be engaged with the mom at all. And we're still going to have to be willing to pour into the children in homes where men do not exist. We are going to have to look at this. We're also going to have to be willing to look at the fact that there are men out there going through all types of pains and issues and they're not making a sound. They're dying silently within. They're struggling and suffering silently within. And anytime there's a murmur of their suffering, they're called weak they're called unmanly. They're pushed back into their shell of silence because admitting you need help in our community is a sign of weakness. And what we're doing is creating explosive devices that are wreaking havoc in our community. And all we have to say after they explode is that's a monster. Oh my God, shaking my head. We built that from the ground up and we aren't ready to reap the whirlwind of what we built. We've got to get ourselves together. I could talk on and on and on, but something has to change. We're going to continue to do our research. We're going to continue to develop programs. We're going to continue this thing we have going on here in Houston. And the goal is to eventually take the blueprint of what we're doing here and to expand it out into every city because it needs to be done. We literally doing something here that I know for a fact isn't done anywhere else. And we are on our way to doing something extraordinary. And my goal is to connect with anybody in any city, in any community that wants to see their community come up and thrive, wants to see little black girls and little black boys uh, protected, given proper uh, tools and to empower them to go out into a world that's inherently hostile towards them and not only compete, but when we have a responsibility to do that. I have for years brought this to you. I'm once again bringing it to you. We need bodies. We need financial support. When I say bodies, I mean we need people who are willing to get out into the community. We need people who are willing to network. We need people who have certain skills and expertise that can be lent to this fight. Uh, I want to stop calling it a struggle. Uh, a struggle means that you're just trying to survive. I want to call it a fight. I want to call it a war because, see, that a fight can be won. A struggle has survived. It's time to start fighting. It's time to stand up. It's time to make our presence felt. It's time to stop whining and complaining and asking someone else to fix what we have the capacity to fix ourselves. It's time to move into a new era of doing things. I'm sick and tired of watching us look at people and ask them to fix what we can fix. And we are actually more capable and equipped to fix it. But we've bought into the illusion that we're powerless. We bought into the illusion that we just need to find our place. We're bought into the illusion that we are lucky just to have them to help us. We've bought into the illusion that what they say is correct, that they're 
version of beautiful is what we should aspire to. That version of professional and classy is what we should aspire to. We've lost ourselves in a search of fitting in and we don't even know who we are. We have an identity crisis that is wreaking havoc on our self-image, our self-esteem, our self-confidence, and it's a collective surge of feeling impotent and unpurposed un 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 and it's literally draining us of any opportunity to get out here and be what we're capable of being. It's time right now to make our presence felt. My challenge is to get on. My challenge is to stop making excuses. My challenge is to find somebody you believe in. Find somebody that you feel that has some kind of uh, capacity to move something whether it's intellectually, whether it's economically, whether it's socially, whether it's politically, but you've got to get behind somebody that you can see their body of work, that you can look at the consistency in their message, the consistency in their behavior and say, this is the person I want to get behind. This is the person that I'm going to ride with. And riding with isn't clicking the like button. That's cool. Riding isn't sitting up and subscribing. That's cool. It isn't the sharing. It isn't what, what, what riding is is saying, hey, man, what do you need? Hey, sister, I see you doing this. How can I help your organization? It's sitting up and saying, let me put some skin in the game, not sit safely on the sideline and cheer you and pump my fist. It's about sitting up and saying, if you're going, I'm going with you. What do you need from me? And sitting up and making yourself available. Some of you are going to be. Uh, contributors, whether it's in research, whether it's in um, services that uh, from that, that 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 extend from your expertise, whether it's from uh, donating and 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 funding. Uh, programs, whether it's from being an open voice yourself, but what you're going to have to do is stand up. Look, um, I'm, I'm doing this thing today because what normally happens with me when I do an event like that is I get up and I come in and I leave everything I have in that event and I normally walk away drained. And then it's another 24 to 48 hours of literally fighting off depression because I know what my people are going through and I've left everything out there and I know that only a few grasp it and 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 if you could have heard the people you really need to listen some to some of the questions that came during the Q&As uh and the panel discussion you should listen to that and that's the second half after my lecture uh you should listen to those questions and you can hear the pain of the people and I've been hearing that pain and, and listening to those voices. And I've been trying uh, for as long as I can to be a voice for the voiceless. And I heard them and I acknowledged them yesterday. And I took on their, uh, their hurt and their pain and I'm carrying it. And, 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 and if you've ever carried somebody's hurt and pain, if you are an empath by nature, you know what I'm talking about. It's easy to talk about you know, I'm with you, I'm with you. I need to feel you. I need to feel you. I need emails from you of what you're capable of doing. I need you to click the uh, support link and donate. I need you to sit up and make phone calls to people you know that have expertise in areas we're trying to approach. That needs to be a unification of uh, of our capacity. This isn't about one person shine, outshining another person. I don't care how much shine I get. I know who I am. But what I do care about is getting the people that I love, my people, on a platform that they can stand on and become their own people. They're not going to give us a platform. We're going to have to take it. We're going to have to build it ourselves. And that's why I'm here, because that walk in, when I walk out of that building, I'm drained because I know the people's pain. I'm taking it with me. 
you know, um, a couple of people uh, celebrated the fact that one woman was complaining that she can't get through to law enforcement to file a complaint about law enforcement. And I told her from this point on, I'm your advocate. You contact me and I'll deal with it. And I know I can. Uh, I know the channels. It's an extra responsibility, but people need to have hope. People need to have an understanding. I've been doing this for years. I've gone to war with uh, school boards. I've gone to war with universities. I've gone to war with police departments. I've gone to war with politicians. And you don't come out of any of those without scars and bruises. When you start dealing with powerful people who are protecting their positions, you're dealing with danger. And I've had my life threatened. I've had opportunities snatched from underneath me because of the enemies I've made. And never once have I backed down. I'm, I'm, I'm a man. I'm, I'm fallible. I love my people. And I love being a black man. It's the most special thing I cling to. Everything else flows from there. And I want to leave a legacy that is reflective of the imprint I've made. So I wake up every day. And while I run businesses, while I do the things that I do, I'm never away from what my responsibility to my people is. And it's time that we wake up and understand the responsibility we have to ourselves. Look, I'm going to get off of here. I could I could literally talk about this all day. Um, there are times you wish you weren't as connected that you weren't you you sometimes you you sit up and in 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 passing wish you know i wish i can be as disconnected as everybody else go out make my paper do my thing move and feel how i want to feel build what i want to build because i know how and let everybody else figure it out but that's not who i am that's not who i've ever been and I don't think I was designed or built to do that. I don't think any of us are. I think it's the easy way out. I think it's easy to pass. And, and I think another thing we tend to do is we pass the buck on to the next person. Somebody will do it. Somebody will show up. Somebody will act on their behalf. Somebody will donate. Somebody, all these things that we know need to happen we push it on, you know, somebody else will give. When I'm dealing with the homeless, I, I know for a fact I can't help them all. But what I do know is I can't let a day go without touching them. And I mean literally putting my hand on them. It's the same way with my people. We used to have a unified love for one another, but individualism has been pushed so much now that it's just about us. What I want. What I want. And as long as I can get what I want, everybody else can do what they want. And we don't understand that individual corruption and compromise leads to collective co uh, corruption and compromise and total chaos. And we are the least ready for total anarchy and chaos. So we really, truly need to come together and unify. So as I get ready to get off of here, I'm asking you to stand up and ride with me. Uh, for those who want to see the uh, complete symposium, um, it's on a couple of places. You can watch it on this channel, the Black Voice channel. Or you can go to Green License, Green Greenhouse International Church um, channel, or go to their Facebook page, and the video is there as well. 
Uh, again, I'm asking you for support. One way you can support, obviously, is funding our research, funding our programs like Black Men Lead, our Rite of Passage Initiative, uh, our programs for mental health, our programs for battered and abused women and women who have suffered from uh, childhood sexual abuse um, and others. And the way that you do that is look in the description box and determine which route you want to give. There are a couple of different ways you can give. Uh, you can also choose what you want to uh, support specifically. Uh, but that's in there. So I'm asking, we have work to do. And I'm asking you to be a part of that. On that note, look, I'm going to get out of here, uh, get myself settled in and finish what I have to do for the day. But again, thank you. Um, I always say this when I'm speaking, uh, when it comes to motivation and inspiration, but I'm going to share this with, it, with you today. I live my life on full so that when I die, I die on E. What does that mean? That means I'm not going to the grave with any of my potential. I'm going to wake up every day and I'm going to give life everything I have for that day. It means that when I go to sleep, I'm going to sleep needing to sleep because I've given everything I have. I'm not taking any of today's potential into tomorrow because tomorrow is full of need of that day's potential. It's time that we all take that approach. We've got to stop taking our potential to the grave. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. I'm free to be who I am.